Nice Hi there. <laughs> Frank Stevenson, chief designer at McLaren, stopped by our offices shortly before we drove the new McLaren MP412C. Frank shared with us his thinking behind the styling of the new car and the challenge in developing a new look for McLaren. Because McLaren's all about racy technology. It's, it's military aircraft technology that uh, is not designed to sell. It's designed for what it has to do. And I thought, I thought, well, that's a very good direction for McLaren to go into because if we design the car as a functional piece of optimized engineering, that, that's going to give us a look. It sounds cliche, but we did everything for a reason. We took the door handles off the car. First of all, they don't look good. If you just get rid of them, that looks even cooler. You know, no air prob uh, aerodynamic problems, no worries about quality or anything like that. The headlights, which are sort of the eyes of the soul or you know, to the soul, we gave it sort of the look of the actual, actual McLaren Speedmark uh, that logo that we have. And, uh, and for the actual headlights themselves, we put it into the top where you need a bit of cooling. Uh, we took some inspiration from the Formula One car where on the back of the, uh, of the body where the engine and the in exhaust parts are at, they have these almost like shark gills. Those are on top of the headlights to let air out. We, we've let the light bleed through the daylight running lamps into those slits so that so if you look in the back view mirror, you know just by the lamps it's a, it's a McLaren coming up. The front radiators, which most car companies put, sports car companies put in the front, are quite big. We took those radiators out of the front and we moved them to the back of the car and we put our very small radiators that normally fitted in the back of the car. We put those in the front. So what we've been able to do is squash the front, front end down even more. But the main radiators, when you put them in the back, the disadvantage is that if you want to make those effective for such a high-powered engine, you got to make sure they get enough air. So what they do is they put them usually in at 90 degrees to the wind or very close to 90 degrees so you get the full impact of the wind. Uh, that makes the car wider, which increases weight. Uh, and it's not always true that a wide car is better. But then you get the issue of now how do you cool the air. And, but what we did was develop with the Aero guys is a blade that is within the intake on the side that curves the air roughly 90 degrees with a minimal loss of efficiency. So that air is still almost, it's not full speed, but it's only losing about 10% of its total speed when it comes in. Right. The spoiler that's on the back of the car, it looks like a spoiler, that isn't even used as a spoiler. The car achieves v, uh, VMAX uh, high speed without that thing even moving up and down. So the car's inherently great downforce at high speed without the spoiler. What that is, it's an air brake so that when you, <coughs> in any matter, matter occasion of urgency, you step on the, high, on the brake hard, it just flips up 90 degrees, settles the rear end down so you don't get this pitching of the car going forward. It adds more braking power also. The, the, the thing about design is not so much the spoilers or that kind of thing, it's what happens underneath the car. The arrow is really important underneath the car. That's what gives you that sucking down, glued to the road feeling, uh, the downforce. So you create that with the diffuser in the back of the uh, Venturi. And the larger the distance between the ground and the top of the diffuser, the more, the more difference you can get between the air that comes underneath the car and where it exits, that that variation of proportion, the bigger it is, the more suction you get. So we, we tried to keep the diffuser up as high as possible. 